All right, we have a parent graph video coming. And by parent graphs, I mean I'm going to be writing the equations of a whole bunch of parent graphs moved all around. Uh, so we're going to be moving things up, down, left, right, reflect over x, and reflect over y. This may seem like a ton of stuff, but the good news is basically all of this is review. Because we've done this for uh, linear functions. We've done it for quadratics. We've done it for square root functions very recently. We did it for absolute value functions a little while back. We did it for exponentials. So we've actually done all five of those ones already separately. And now we're kind of bringing it all together. So if you remember, when we go up and down, we do it on the outside of the parentheses away from the x. So for linear, it's really easy. y equals x plus 3 is up, y equals x minus 3 is down. Moving to quadratics, y equals x squared plus 3. On the outside, basically if you just tack a plus on the end, you're going up. If you tack a plus, or a, a, a negative, a minus, and you're going down. Uh, cubed, same idea. Tack a plus, up. Tack a minus down. Uh, square root, same idea. Whoops, plus for up, minus for down. Now, for the fractiony ones, the inverse variation guy here, we do the same thing. You just put a plus 3 on the end for up and a minus 3 on the end for down. Uh, left and right are where things are going to get a little more interesting for the fractiony one. Uh, absolute value, same idea. Absolute value of x plus 3. Absolute value of x minus 3. And exponential, same idea. You rewrite your exponential, you write plus 3, that's up. You rewrite your exponential and you write minus 3, that's down. Now, I, re I went up 3 and down 3 for all of these. You could put any number here. So, uh, for this last one, I could have said plus 5 and that would be up 5. And I could have said minus 1, and that would be 1. All right, that's up and down. Left and right happens next to the x. So if there's any sort of parenthesis or operation, it needs to happen inside parentheses, inside that operation. So what does that mean? Well, for left and right, it's actually really easy. Because uh, left and right... Um, Remember, left is always positive, right is always negative, and when there's no parentheses, like in y equals x, it actually ends up looking exactly the same as the up and down does. But for all of our other ones, it's going to look different in pretty important ways. So for x squared, we're going to have our x plus 3, because left is the plus 1, inside the parentheses squared. Uh, for cubed, same idea, x plus 3 inside the parentheses cubed, that's left 3. For the square root, uh, again, inside the square root gets us left or right. Um, for the fraction one, it's going to be 1 over and the x plus 3 is going to go on the bottom. You can always think of the top and bottom of a fraction as parentheses. Uh, but importantly, that stuff needs to go on the bottom with the x. Whereas when it was up and down, it didn't go on the bottom. Uh, absolute value, inside. And our stuff also inside the exponent. So next to the x is the really key part for left to right. So now I'm going to go through and do all the right ones, which are just the exact same. Oh, I can change my numbers up. Exciting. Let's make this one right 1. Nice. Make this one right 100. Nice. This one uh, right 7. This one will take write 0 0.5 decimals. 
So big idea being it happens next to the x inside the operator. Now our last parts are reflect over x and reflect over y. When you reflect over x, if I draw a little graph up here in the upper corner, what we're doing is we're reflecting down, which means we're making all the y values negative. When we're making the y values negative, you put a negative on the outside. You can also put a negative next to the y and multiply both sides by a negative. So we could say negative y equals x and then multiply both sides by a negative and get y equals negative x. That will always reflect over x. The other way we think about it is we just throw a negative in front of the whole thing like this. A negative on the outside is a reflect over x. And so I can start speeding up and going through. I'm taking the original function and just throwing a negative on the outside. Uh, here, a negative on the outside. This one, a negative on the outside. And in the last one, a negative on the outside. The outside means I'm not putting it next to the x inside the operator. When I reflect over y, surprise, I put it inside. So for lines, it's boring. But for quadratics, it's actually really important because that negative on the inside, when we square it, actually makes it positive. So it makes it the exact same as y equals x squared. Because when you reflect over the y-axis with a parabola, which I have up here in the upper left, you actually just get the other side of the parabola. So it's like exact same if you reflect it. That's kind of cute. Um, if I uh, reflect x cubed, it's a negative inside. This one actually is different because negative 1 cubed is still negative 1. Uh, I can continue. I put a negative inside a square root. Whoopsies. Uh, and you might think, wait, a negative inside a square root, this is complete garbage. But it isn't if you plug in negative numbers for x. So this one actually only works for negative numbers and looks something like this, which is reflected over the y-axis. Uh, next one, y equals 1 over negative x. y equals the absolute value of negative x. And y equals 2 to the negative x power. This one also looks significantly different. Instead of a normal exponential graph that's going up, it's an exponential graph that is completely inverted and on the other side. So they look totally different. Uh, okay, this is all of our rules for making these. Now, when you're doing the problems on the homework, uh, because this picture I just made here is basically everything you need to do uh, to set up for the homework, you're going to be asked more things on the homework. So I'm going to pop over to that. This is what the homework looks like. Notice how you only have four things to look at the adjustment for, but many of these have multiple things going on. For instance, in question three on here, it has a negative in front of the whole problem. It has a minus three inside and a negative one on the outside. So three different transformations are happening. This one. Um, the last piece here is that um, you're going to be asked for domain, range, x-intercept, y-intercept, vertex, and axis to symmetry. Please, please, please use Desmos for this. Oh, look at all this stuff in Desmos. A bunch of calculus stuff. Uh, let's clear out all my calculus stuff. If I can click on all these x's. And just type in whatever function you have in your question. So if you have something like x squared minus 3. I just realized I wrote x2. There we go. Uh, if you have this. And you need to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercept. If you have Desmos, holy smokes, so much easier. Look, 1.732 is my x-intercept. Negative 1.732 is my other x-intercept. My y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 3. So Desmos can help a ton with graphing these. A ton, a ton, a ton. You can check every single one of your answers here. If you look at the other... Oopsies. Got I am. Um, if you look at the other questions on here, um, you notice that they ask for things like, where's the vertex? That's pretty easy to find. That's just the bottom of your parabola. 
it asks for a domain and range, uh, which we have talked about a fair amount. Um, we didn't throw any curveballs your way with domain and range, except maybe the exponential one. Because uh, if you remember, exponentials have a uh, asymptote along the bottom. They always like start really small and then get really, really big. But this plus one is going to affect that. So make sure you check your graph when you're looking at it and uh, answer that one accurately. Uh, another thing is exponentials definitely don't have one of these dudes. So if unless your function is an absolute value or a quadratic, you do not need to worry about vertex. All right. Uh, I think that's it for the things I want to cover. I am looking forward to seeing some of your graphs uh, come soon. And uh, if you need any other um, assistance with graphing square roots or moving those around, um, please check the live stream I did Wednesday, which uh, I'll be posting to my homework very shortly. Anyways, um, uh, we just a little, uh, let's talk a little bit about the schedule for next week. Okay, this is my beautiful table here. Bye-bye. Uh, um, so my schedule for next week uh, is we are going to have an assignment on Tuesday. So Tuesday is going to be kind of a normal day. Um, we're actually going to have an online assignment related to the stuff we've been doing worksheets on. So if you're sick of doing worksheets, we are going to have an online assignment. It's going to be on uh, moving parent graphs, basically. We are also going to experiment with making parent graphs steeper and less steep. which is called uh, dilation or that sort of thing. Uh, so it's things like 2x squared, where it's two times as steep or two times the absolute, or two times the square root of x, twice as steep. We're going to be messing with that sort of stuff. Um, there's, or sorry, Friday of next week, there is not going to be homework. So no homework. Um, the key part after Tuesday of next week is going to be turning in any missing assignments because just a quick reminder that your grade say you have a 70 percent in the class right now if you do a hundred percent of your homework with a hundred percent success rate uh, which means you get 80 percent or above on all your assignments remember that i average these two and you'll be getting an 85 percent uh, or a b uh, grade adjustment in the grade book so please be aware that doing your homework actually can raise your grade. Um, it isn't about just doing the minimum to keep your grade. There is actually some sort of benefit to uh, finishing all your work. So that's what we're going to be focusing on, which is why we're not going to have an assignment on Thursday or Friday. Um, our last day of school technically is next week, uh, next next week, technically the 23rd. Um, but that's also when grades are due. So that's why we're not assigning something then you couldn't possibly have a late assignment. Um, so we're going to be going up until that last day. Uh, I'll probably be going over some of the homework stuff uh, just in a little video for that Friday. And otherwise, I'm going to give an encouragement to turn in assignments. And that's it. Sorry for the long video. And I'll see you again next time.